Another great question from Sheila. Is there a way with the lens design to increase peripheral plus and create a bit more myopia control than the one diopter in one meridian only? So can we up the hydraulic force along one single meridian? In that last example I showed you where you're creating a dual zone toric, that's the way to address this. Um, you would need to have a fairly toric eye um, so that we could make a toric landing and keep it rotationally stable. Um, then we could use that toric base curve to try to create those two hydraulic forces. So Sheila's getting exactly the right point. We need different hydraulic forces. How do we create those different forces? And that's with a dual zone toric. Toric in the landing, torque in the base curve. Now, an, another benefit is using smaller optic zones and uh, two modern designs that, that I've been involved with, the B-Free and the Moon Lens, um, they allow us to squeeze down that optic zone, that move that reservoir farther in um, to create more effect over a smaller surface area. Um, so by using smaller optic zones, that's often a way that we can manipulate the epithelium under, with a bit more control. So that would be something we might try as well. Not go with a six millimeter optic zone, but use a, a 5.5 millimeter. Another great question from Sheila. We sometimes push jobs through the lab with questionable eccentricity, like this case. Could you tell us if we are creating issues for the lab in doing this and how serious is eccentricity that is outside the recommended values in predicting lens success? Uh, great question. Eccentricity has an important role. Um, John Mountford, again, I'll go back to the godfather of ortho -K or the godfather of modern ortho -K. Um, he explained to us that there are a number of factors that determine candidacy. The radius of the eye, the steeper the cornea, the better the potential. The higher the eccentricity, the better the potential. And really those are the two dominant forces um, or dominant uh, factors. Um, but then the third would be the size, the lamellar fiber length, the size of the eye. And it plays much less of a role. So the bigger the eye, the more you can manipulate ortho -K effect and John's work. But the steepness of the cornea, the radius of the eye, and the eccentricity are really the two most important. Now, here we have a patient 43, 37, fairly median in radius eccentricity 0.65, that's pretty normal for a Medmont topography. So how do you use those together to understand the candidacy of a patient? And essentially, if you have a low minus patient, it really doesn't matter what the radius of the eye is or the eccentricity, you're probably gonna be able to squeeze out a minus one or minus 150 effect without too much trouble. If you have a patient who's minus four, five, or six, and you have a median radius I and a eccentricity that's slightly lower, maybe 0.5, that could be a problem for predictability. That could be a little tougher of a case. You may not be able to achieve the myopic reduction that you hope for. If you're shooting for a minus eight myope and you've got median cornea and median eccentricity, then forget about it. It's just not going to be possible to move the cornea enough or at least your chances are fairly low. So when using eccentricity, think about the RX change. If it's incredibly low, eccentricity probably doesn't matter. If you have a high myopia that you need to squeeze out, you need all the factors working in your, the variables working in your favor. Steep cornea, high eccentricity. So median with your Medmont is 0.67. When I looked at, I think it was about 300 or 400 eyes, we found the median eccentricity on the flat meridian was 0.67. In a cornea topographer, a corneal topographer that has a smaller surface area of coverage, the median E value might be more like 0.5 because it's not measuring as far out as a Medmont might. So you might see different numbers in the literature that way. But for Medmont users, median eccentricity is um, 0.67 roughly. 0.65 is pretty average. 
So that's one of the tools that you can definitely use for determining um, should we go or no go with a patient in ortho -K.